new business loans, business credit cards, and overall funding for business owners, startups, and non-startups, a new select funding with lower pricing. I'll be getting into the share screen in a moment, typing this out, showing you the qualifications to this new select funding, as well as others. But before I do, welcome in. My name is Michael with Viral Funding Solutions. I'm a business funding expert, a business loan broker expert, as well as a pre-underwriter slash underwriter. In other words, I help connect you to the best lender, lenders organization that I've vetted. I review a lot of financials, the bank statements, P&Ls, tax returns, debt schedule, credit report reviews, and plenty more. I run multiple businesses successfully myself. I know what it's like to start from scratch as a startup and build, grow, expand, get out of a tight pinch, getting funding for and so being in the space, it has been a huge passion project, and I've been in it for many years. I don't do it primarily for this. I do it for people over profits, finding the right character, person with the right characteristic traits or working towards them and becoming better, self-growth and self-mastery, personal development. That matters a lot, the individual. And so I want you to know that I'm a very loyal person. I'm a Libra, if that says anything. Um, more introverted, analytical, cerebral. It's hard for me to be here video-wise. I've done plenty, and you can say I've learned the skill sets over many years of building businesses. And I want you to know that I'm better with writing, math, systems. That's more of my area, the back-end work. Uh, but as you know, or perhaps not, when you're building a business, you wear multiple hats and it's great that you learn what the marketing department does, what the financial department does, what the processing is about distributing this and getting your hands in different areas. And then later on, perhaps you expand and then you start bringing more people in. So in business, like I've been in for some time, I know very well that it takes an accumulation of understanding these different areas and how to perform in them. So I just want you to know that. Uh, and I have a lot of integrity. I'm very trustworthy, reliable, accountable, responsible, punctual, and disciplined. Those are two huge areas for me. My effort, you won't question. My attitude, you won't question. I'm usually the one questioning that from the other person on the other side. When they're thinking, can they trust me? I'm usually asking the same. And it's usually from my end that I'm more worried about that because a lot of people, they show that they can't be so trustworthy. They really show their true colors over time or in the beginning. So I want you to know that I have your best interests at heart as a person. I'm somebody who's been through the process. I look at a lot of financials. I understand how to interpret things, reorganize, manage the be business better, how to understand cash flow, projections, performa, everything like that. And from a mathematical perspective, point of view, data, numbers, and as well as understanding your situation where you're at as a person, that truly does matter. So let me get into this share screen. New business loans and business credit cards for business owners, as mentioned, help from an expert. And I won't overpromise and under deliver. If you're out in the market and you're shopping around, there's advantages to that. And then there are disadvantages. Yes, you won't be always getting a hard pull from the beginning. There's like a soft pull and that doesn't even show up. But the more you're going out there and giving your information directly or indirectly to people, a broker, maybe who doesn't know their stuff, they're just in learning and training mode in the very beginning and you want to help them, that's a whole different stance. Uh, but I know very well that if I go to somebody, I'm not giving them my business just to give it to them because they gave me a little bit of information that I wanted to hear. I really level with high net worth uh, individuals and I want to make sure that my business is being taken care of. And if I'm somebody who understands business very well, ROI, net, gross profit margins, uh, markup costs, I can go even deeper. These are just some of the concepts and formulas to dive deep into each and every business. I want to make sure the person that I'm giving it to understands those concepts as well and can go deep enough, not just surface level. Hey, how can I help you today get a loan or a credit card? And you have to also look at the standard you have. Are you doing something that's just average, below average, or do you want more? If you want more, I'm the person here willing to help you. 
And I have a way, so down below in the description, I'll leave a questionnaire form if you want to inquire for funding and more help. There will be a questionnaire form. It'll look like this. Let me show you how it opened on another tab. And you'll come to this page. You can go through it, see different options. Some of the companies that have helped get funding, there are plenty more. I just put a handful, a quick bio of who I am as a person too. So you understand that you're not just placing something on the business and brand identity is I'm more than just the business. So you know this, I'm not transactional and I'm not this person who's doing what's in my best interest over yours. It's people over profits. And again, I just don't take on everybody and anybody because if I did, I'd be giving up my energy and time to those who don't deserve it. And people who don't show up, don't give simple feedback, are not open-minded, are not patient enough. And these are the things that people lack. There's a lot of egos. There's a lot of ignorance, stubbornness, arrogance, cockiness, in not the good way. And so understanding character, your values, your vision, your mission, what do you stand by and stand behind is first and foremost to me. And just because you're not at that high standard that I'm looking for and where I'm at now in my self-growth and in my business and businesses doesn't mean that I won't help you. It's if you're working towards something greater, I'm here to help more than just funding. Funding is a byproduct of health, relationships, wisdom, and even learning from you as well and taking things from you and understanding that, hey, this is a way I can also grow but helping one another out. And there's more ways than one. And again, I'm not this transactional person who's just going to go over here and go, oh, no, no, funding surface level stuff. And uh, like, I no. So right here, one of these two buttons you can click on, you'll get a free six step pre-approval lending checklist and 900 plus exclusive grant documentation list. For my example, I'm a non-startup. So I'll click right here. If you were a startup, you'll click the one in orange or the one to the right, depending I change colors and here make sure you read the top i won't go through it right now but it's important that you do because i don't want my energy and my time zapped or wasted as an entrepreneur i'm very punctual and disciplined and i'm very nice i give people the benefit of the doubt but i know when to step in and really lead and i don't have to lead with my voice i'm not a talker i'm more of an action taker so right here is the form that you'll fill out this is not a application this is for me to better understand where you're at right now. And I can pre-underwrite based on credit, cash flow, collateral, there's liquidity and equity. So there's generally three ways and how you can find out you have the best strength in one or more of these areas. You have credit, you have good, subprime, subprime excuse me, bad, fair, poor credit. Where are you on that spectrum? You have great, excellent credit. Do you have cash flow? If cash flow, how much? What are those transactions? What do they look like in and out? Average daily bank balances, monthly revenue, day over day, week over week, bi week, monthly, over the course of a quarter, six months, nine, 12 months. There's a lot of the stuff that I look at as well. And there's also collateral. That's another funding option. Asset based lending, ABL, you'll hear it abbreviated. And this can mean real estate. And that could be the form of equity and doing a cash out refinance. There's another option that I help people with and on investment property that you own free and clear or commercial real estate and looking at that on the commercial side and then underneath a business. There's plenty of options, 401k, IRA financing. There's an SBA micro loan for startups up to 50,000. You have the community advantage program. You have credit, which is a great one for those who are looking for funding as a startup and as a non-startup, I'll cover that in more detail. So right here, let me go ahead and scroll down. We're gonna pass this for a second and then come back to it a little bit later. Now down here, I'm gonna draw your attention to, we have select funding. In this new funding service, I'm looking for clients who are doing 100,000 per month in monthly revenue. Just because you don't qualify, if you don't right now, stick with me. I'll get into an alternative. There's more standard pricing. And if you don't have at least 100,000, you're a startup, free revenue, I'll help you out. There are options. And again, that questionnaire form will be down below. Uh, what I've seen lately is because I'm putting this through my email autoresponder tool, which is called AWeber. 
I've noticed that some people have had difficulty filling this out and they get like an error message. It could be because of server. And sometimes when you have subscribed to other people's list or you fill something out that Aweber has picked upon, but you haven't opened up the emails through their servers, they tend to not, uh, you could say, want to work with you or want to have you on their servers. So they might like kick you out of that or they might just won't work. Or it could be just a difference of a cache and a cookie. So you have to refresh that and you have to cure cookies and cache. Could be that. So just so you know, that's expected. Uh, it won't happen every time for each person. So just go through this. And I'll also leave my email in the comments. So you can also send me an email. My Facebook profile is right here. Just so you know, if you want to reach me on Messenger, you can do that and begin there. But the best place to start is the questionnaire form so I can better analyze and evaluate. I'll put together a comprehensively personalized and customized email with a PDF included showing your best funding option and options from an expert to somebody as a person first and then in business. That's what matters to me over everything and not being transactional because I'm telling you, I've dealt with people over and over that doesn't happen as much anymore. I'm extremely calculated, but all they're doing is seeking information and they don't really value who that person is. And it doesn't have to be over a phone call for you to understand. Just watching the video here, we don't always have to be on the phone. That's not what I'm doing every day. That's not what I do every day. Uh, when it is needed and I know it is, then it makes sense to. It could be a clarity reason for something else. But the questionnaire form will really help you, and I'll show you your best funding option and options. Those ones to get started with, how to submit it so it's in our review for the back end. And then if I ask for something up front for review, how would this be looked at? There's processing things that I'm doing on the back end too with the lender and organization. There's quite a fit, uh, bit, excuse me. So right here for this select funding, it's 100,000. Uh, ideally, we want a million. That's the starting point for a business generating a million in gross revenue. Doesn't have to be profit, not EBITDA. And this is based upon a future advance. So this select funding is a future advance or advanced funding, as you would hear it called, merchant cash advance, a hybrid cash advance. And this is where it's based upon your future receivables and your sales. So projecting what you would make based upon the revenue you are making now, based on uh, emphasis on the pattern, if it's a strong or a slow pattern, do you have current decreasing revenue? Is it trending upward? Is it staying stable? Is it too much fluctuation? How is it fluctuating month over month over the last three to four months, sometimes six plus months? So funding in this category is not technically a business loan. I'll get into the other types of funding in a moment. And you can find out more by filling out the questionnaire form down below. I'll show you different ones and which one is best suited. Ballpark numbers, if so, and showing you what's best to get started with for your specific situation. There will also be, uh, I didn't show this, but there will also be a field down here, or didn't go through it at least. Please describe your financial needs here. Expand on your use of funds, business operations, ROI, cash flow projections, current cash flow, ROI, gross net, expectations. Be thorough. Again, I'm a math guy, and the more numbers you give me, the better. That way I can reverse engineer and understand based upon just that and the operations of the business, which I will understand more, then we'll go from there. So a million, this is advanced funding, again, based on future receivable receivables, future sales, and looking at what's current and basing it off of what would happen in two to three months in the next 90 days, how fast would somebody be able to get a return on their investment? These types of funding situations, your benefit is greater than your repayment. So with these type of funding situations, you normally see four to 24 month terms. Uh, with this select funding, you can see higher, up to 24 months usually, and then somebody who's doing generally 100,000 per month, you see between 12 to 24 months. Uh, at a lower tier, if it's a B tier lender, you might only get 12 to 13 mo months max, maybe 15 months if the second time around. And then you could see 18 to 24 months with select funding. And so if it's a shorter repayability, the thing in the thinking behind the psychology, no matter how you need to use your funds is most people generally would want a longer term and most people want a lower interest rate. That's the ideal format. And I'm going to go into some of these other funding options with lower interest rates and a longer repayability. So please stick with me. This is for the select funding right now. And the other way of thinking of this is even if you had a slightly higher interest rate, if it weren't a business loan from a bank, FDIC bank or an SBA loan, equipment financing or whatever other situation it is, but your rate was higher, let's say it was in the 18, 19%, 21%, or in these cases, these are based on a total payback. So I'll get into that in a moment and what that means. But let's say if even when it were 
but you had a $350,000 bank loan and then 150,000 FDIC insured line of credit. These things can be coupled in and I can help you with bank, non-bank financing. And this is a non-banking situation. Well, I look at that and go, yeah, at a slightly higher interest rate, what would be my payments? Of course, I have to calculate because I need to see cash inflow, cash outflow. How much profit would I be able to retain and be able to reinvest into my business? Are you purchasing new or used inventory, a uh, used car? Uh, what are you doing exactly? Like new inventory, I mean, like, is it a new product on the shelf as well? It could be the same thing you're already spending on used inventory, meaning are you purchasing it from somebody else or suppliers, vendors? This is what you've already used in the past. Uh, and you're acquiring things at a lower cost. You're looking at wholesale, retail. Uh, there's different ways of me defining new and used inventory, obviously. And you can kind of interwine the two. Uh, and then you see a cost in that. And you see how much inventory you've used and how much you've yet to use and having a huge cost rolling over to the next month and things that are not getting off your shelf quick enough. Equipment, what are you financing? What are you leasing? What are you trying to buy out? Why would you do it that way? What are you leasing in this commercial building, in this property? What do you need for your marketing and your advertising? What's your budget? What's your lifetime value? What's your lifetime gross profit value per customer? What's your blended loan to cost per acquisition? What's your blended customer acquisition cost per channel. You can look at it for Facebook, TikTok, social media, and optimize better per channel. And then you have more of a global look when you're doing free and organic paid traffic marketing methods. There's so much of this that I already do in the marketing world. So I understand numbers very well and how to help you with a lot of this. And I've assessed a lot of businesses, people doing a lot in revenue per month, per year, low revenue, pre-revenue, understanding their plan and their plan of attack. Why are they not in profit enough? And giving them pointers, even well, even if you didn't always like that. There's people who get put off by it because it's my business and they don't want to know, know better. I've been doing this for a while. It's been more or less equal to in every single industry. There's always something to pick from. And I go, yeah, I could have done this. I would have done this this way. Knowing that your budget is this, you're too accustomed to past results. So a lot of business owners right now, especially in this economy with their marketing and advertising spend, for example, they're not going beyond their means. They're sticking to what they know and what's giving them a past result. And that past result is not a good inflection point to say, I'm going to take this data and then now take it and multiply it by two to three X because most people won't do that. They stay comfortable with the results they're getting and ask why they're not in enough profit. And it's because they haven't uh, diverted in their market. Competitors are doing more. Customers are changing. They're looking for a different outcome and a different base and you more now than ever, especially with marketing spend and everything going up, cost to acquire customers become expensive in many industries. You have to look for ways of expanding your revenue. One revenue stream or a couple of them having more reoccurring, recurring revenue streams in a stream, uh, but also going out of that box and marketing more efficiently to a wider audience that you can impact too. There's a lot of different areas to grow in, but you have here 100,000 and then we're looking for a million, 1.2 million plus. So Minimum usually is a million monthly, a hundred thousand per month. Over here, I want to look at three years time in business, nothing less, three years minimum and beyond. Because this is select pricing. Anybody underneath two years doing a hundred thousand, there's standard funding, just so you know. So if you're less than three years, if you're less than a hundred thousand. Yes, there are other options. If you have a minimum of 15,000, 25,000, 20,000, 3,000 on your lowest month and you're a gig worker, then there's that option available. But the funding approvals with those are generally 50 to 75, if not 25 to 50 or 25 to 75% of your lowest monthly revenue and the average to look at. And a few other things like average daily balances, starting and ending balances, the type of transactions, the time that it takes to get the cash inflow versus how much of that goes out. Do you retain more than what you go and keep out if you're already getting 5,000 in one day, but then 5,600 goes out and you're looking at having to overdraw. Now you have overdrafts and you're looking at a lot like non-sufficient funds and negative days. It's not a good indication that somebody should be lending you money just based upon one day, but just to carry you over, you're looking for funding. A lot of people do that, but you're already in the negative too. And the thing is, even such a low amount of revenue that the business is generating, that's a higher risk. So once you're at 100,000, you're lesser of a risk 
unless the time in business, unless you have not sufficient funds. So three years time in business is it. And then zero NSFs, not sufficient funds, or you can say negative days, generally speaking, in the last 90 days. And that translates into three months, simple math, 90 days, or depending on the month. Uh, but you can say three months there. And that's what I'm looking for. If I were to take you to this premier lender or lenders, and they were to decide, do you have a, a, a non-sufficient fund? Excuse me. Just one of them can really just rip this out. And it really wouldn't work. It would be a hard, hard case to make. And we'd have to go through another funding sequence or through another uh, lender to look and evaluate and make sure everything is getting done for you on the back end. And a lot of this, just so you know, um, making sure you have the most competitive competitive offer is important. Shopping around is one way to kind of figure that out. Like if I'm not the first person or the second, third, maybe I am the first. What I tell people and they know a lot of the time is when they come to me, whether it's their first, their last, I'm usually their final destination. And that means in a good way, because if you're coming to me and I'm giving you the opportunity to be able to work with you, you're, you're doing something right. And that means that it's not just the business I'm looking at, it's you because you are the one giving me good feedback as a person, who you are, who you're trying to work towards. You really have that loyalty. You are trustworthy. You're trying to be better and you're trying to get better at every stage. I'm not looking for those who are just all over chaotic, don't care about who I am at all, don't value that I've been here, done that. And then also was once in the nine to five with the company going down under, I had to go back on unemployment benefits and food stamp cards. And that was many years ago. It was embarrassing for me to show up to the grocery store with an EBT card, couldn't even look over here or back here, making sure they weren't looking. Couldn't even look the person in the eyes. Grateful and thankful to walk out of there, but was so stressed that I had to come back. I know what it's like to be on the bottom without a comforter, without a bed at a point in a small little box in an apartment where there was a family downstairs and I had to be upstairs, not eating the best food, a sandwich with some ham and cheese and some tapatio on it and some chips on the side if I was lucky enough. Uh, being once an academic, studying chemical engineering, and then getting into business and getting my degree through there. And working construction, manufacturing, was in warehousing, I was a ramp agent courier role, administrative dispatching. I did not want to go back to that ever again. Never want to think about that. Not that I did bad, but it's just like, it was a lot. Uh, and I was learning and that's something I had to take on at the time, uh, doing their marketing to looking at their budgeting to eventually quite a bit. Financial logistics role for a huge contracting company servicing HP and PSL. That's the one that goes down under. I was underpaid, undervalued, underappreciated. So I knew I had to find something more and it wasn't just going back to school and getting more certifications. And it was to start something. So that's when I began digital marketing agency, B generation business. And then I expanded there uh, doing hands-off businesses, passive income businesses, affiliate marketing, the health space. Later on, grew into the online business, helping people with different tools, courses, and then financing now for many years. So I have your best interest at heart, just so you know this. So zero NSFs or negative days in any of the last 90 days, that's equal to the last three months. Uh, or if it's the current month, that's also something when we do a bank verification check, a lot of these advances at the end of the process to look to see if something's out. Maybe it's a background thing as well. If it wasn't done already before from final underwriting, then if that account that the lender's looking at, that they're going to go disperse the funds into for the month that you're applying on and you missed a day, you missed two days, that, that can be detrimental. So you have to plan ahead of time in anything that you do. And I always tell people, if you can apply towards the beginning of the month, instead of towards the end where your revenue may not be higher than it was last month, or you're just dropping over 50 to 75%, that can cause a decline. And then you have an NSF that happened towards the end of the month where you didn't think it would, or you were planning for, and you're like, well, I didn't have the funds before. Got to plan for these things. And the, the thing is that I tell people is when you don't need the funds is really when you need it most. Lines of credit, you can justify more because you can pull as you go and you only pay interest on what you use. With the lump sum of funding like these are, you have to be more calculated and understanding that I'm going to take this and I'm going to make more than what I have to repay back. Uh, the repayability to these, actually, let me give you the credit score. 700 plus FICO and usually FICO experience. So that's the good range of credit. And this is a higher standard because this is select funding. The other thing is the pricing point is 1.18, excuse me could say to 1.29 x 
your advanced amount. So for example, you get 100,000, 1.18 times 100,000, that's 118,000 that you will be paying back in total. Over what term you get, that's up to the side. And then if you have a 1.29 on 100,000, that's 129,000 total payback. We can talk about payback amount, cost of funds, early payment discounts. I'll try to get into that a little bit uh, later as I have already put that on this document. So it's very simple math. It's not complicated. It's not this whole algebraic equation, geometry, trigonometry, calculus, integrals, inferential statistics, descriptive. It isn't any of that. Uh, so very simply said is you have this, there's a buyer, there's a seller rate, the most that the lender is willing to buy at and sell at, uh, and making sure that they get their return on investments and that all parties are happy. So this is very, very low compared to the alternative. So if you didn't get select funding, that would be closer to 1.3 to a 1.55 or a 1.69. So in terms of this, it's 100,000 to uh, 130 to 155 or to 169,000 on the 100K. So you strip that apart, the 69,000, think about how much you have to pay back for every dollar, and yes, that for many people is expensive. And I generally wouldn't say to take that. Now, it depends on if that's your only option or if you really needed the money quick enough or you had options, but you just had to start this right away. You know you're going to make more than 169000 You know you're going to make more than 130000 on that 100000 And I generally tell people have a buffer between 30 to 90 days to make at least 25 to 50% of that. If you can make more than that and pay this off, in like the first 90 days, amazing. If you can't, that's fine. If it's like a little bit of a longer term where you're like, okay, well, I'm going to do a build out. I'm going to do an ADU unit or I'm going to do this. I'm going to turn this into a rental or I'm going to do a, a, an overhaul or my marketing department. I'm bringing in new personnel to get them up to speed. It's going to take me about a month. So they're going to be running the ads profitably in the next two months. So you got to be calculated in that and say, even if I couldn't pay this back right away, the return on investment would be the sixth, the seventh month in. And I'm being calculated in my approach, but what's also my plan B just in case? So you don't want to fall behind and start saying, well, now my cash flow is really being sucked up uh, if it weren't already, because these can do that. Not saying they can't grow your profitability. They can. They can strip away from as well. But the thing is, when you're paying these off, you're paying a good substantial amount per day. If it's per week, there's also that. There may be some monthly options out there that are harder to get unless you're going through this other processing or this other company. And they're strictly related to a specific industry. And a lot of the times, those you have to be careful for because of the absorbent amount of fees. If you don't know how to calculate them correctly, which a lot of lenders say, I would say that they're not, they're like looking at this and going, well, do they really know their numbers? I hope they know their numbers. Uh, and a lot of other people out there are thinking, well, they might not know their numbers well enough. So we're counting on it. Uh, and you get not the word tricked into, but you fall into something that you're thinking is very predatory. And then there's stuff that out there is, uh, I'm not saying every part of it and every location you go to, but just make sure you understand your ROI, you understand your gross, your net, you understand your cash flow injection, your assumptions, your availability of cash flow as it is free investment, operational, and then there's other areas too. So 1.30 to 1.69, you'll see oftentimes with other forms of pricing, but a 1.18, that's awesome. That's premier funding. 118,000 on 100,000 you're borrowing. And most people, when they take that and they're going to make more than 118,000, that's what they're using it for. That's a great use. And even if you hit equilibrium and you have to kind of refinance, you pay off 50% or you're mature in your time in the uh, way you're paying this 50% uh, of the way there, that's very helpful. Uh, so that's the emphasis on this. I can outline quite a bit more, but that's what I wanted to show you right now with the selective pricing. Uh, the approval amounts, generally you see are one to 1.5X your amount. So if you're doing 100,000 on its lowest, the highest possible is 150,000, if not 200,000, but usually it's one to 1.5. So just to keep it at a round number, 100,000, 1.5 by 100, that's 100, 150,000, excuse me. And so that's what you would expect to get. Now, what determines what you get are obviously things like your credit, uh, that what are you taking on right now? What have you applied to recently? Do you have another position? Uh, do you have a negative balance? Of course, that would usually disqualify you for this. Uh, 
Do you have a low daily bank balance, average daily balance? Starting and ending balances don't look clean. The type of transactions, the way they're being deposited doesn't look good. Uh, too much is going out. Like there's a lot of things that come in and couple in with getting approved. And this is just some that I mentioned. There are many others, uh, but that's it. And if you don't qualify for that, there's another one where you don't want to have more than three non-sufficient funds or three negative days in any of the last three months or 90 days. Excuse me. That was a call. Uh, and that could be for a different type of funding with lower uh, revenue requirements, but it could be higher pricing when you fall into that 1.3 to 1.69, 1.3 to 1.5 five, five type of range. So just expect that uh, to happen if you don't qualify for that. And over here with just some of the early payment discounts. So the lenders and the ones that I'm working with that I have, they will never charge a prepayment penalty for paying off early. There are those out there who could. So I decide not to work with those. However, prepayment penalties are very different from early pay discounts. So now that you understand a bit of that, here are some of the scenarios. So if you paid off your funding in one month, you get a discount of 12% on your unpaid balances, and that includes principal and the cost of funds. Uh, you can receive a discount on the payback amount, and that is paid back within 90 days, preferably. The sooner, the better. The discount is, obviously, the more you'll have. This is not a bank, though, I want you to know, so you don't get to walk away for all the remaining costs of the funds. So paid off in the second month, a discount of 10% of the unpaid balance includes the principal and cost of funds. So this is kind of a, a rough average and estimate. You might see sometimes fall between 9 and 10, 10 and 11, more or less. Or if we up the scale on the 12% because it's premium and some other stuff that comes in and the reasoning for the funds and it's all laid out, correct? Well, there could be some differences. Paid off month three, a discount of 8% of the unpaid balance. And that includes your principal and your cost of the funds. So prepayment discounts on a paper. Premier Select Funding, that's getting into the A paper. And I say A paper being somebody who's doing 50000 on their lowest month in the last three months or four months, depending on the state, California, uh, New York, and there could be others too. And so that's the case for it. California, Utah, there's a few others. But uh, what we're looking at is Premier. And if you're an A paper client, 50000 700 FICO is generally it. You have two plus years time in business a lot of the time. You're going to get better rates. And so A-paper lenders will almost always provide prepayment discounts of the range between 20 to 25% of the total cost of the funds is what they're looking at. Unlike for the B and C paper lenders, there's an 8 to 12% prepayment discount of the total amount due. So the past one, you see total cost of funds for 20 to 25%. And then you have an 8 to 12% prepayment discount of the total amount due. So a difference, there's a difference there, including your principal and cost of funds. The A paper lender will take the 20 to 25% off the cost of funds only and not the principal that is borrowed. This is obviously not a bank, so it can't be situated the way you want it to. And that's okay. You're still saving in places you need to, and it's helpful. Like a 100K prepayment example, let's say you're getting 100,000 in business funding and you're giving a 1.38, you're not select funding pricing, credit, it could be other forms of revenue, et cetera. Then you're paying back 138,000 on that 100,000. The industry standard is half these numbers. So however, most of the lenders provide uh, the rates below. So using the eight to 12% discount, B and C paper, or if it's not more than C, your prepayment discount would end up being 11,040 to 16,560 minus your already paid in amount. Using the 20 to 25% discount scenario of the 38K cost of funds, that's $7,600 to $9,500. I hope that makes sense. I know it takes some getting used to and some adjustment, but I wanted to go over that. Now, the next thing I want to highlight is bankable funding. Uh, bankable financing, you can generally expect to see 8.5 to let's say 15.9% rounded to 16%. I'm not doing all these calculations right now. But you can see right here, 8.5%, that is the lowest. And most people who get into 8.5% have an extremely clean profile, their credit, their cash flow, and it's increasing cash flow, and it's stronger than it's ever been. Profitability is there, and it's been profitable for some years, and increasing profitability and revenue trends. Uh, more that they put back into their business, like we can see, there's also assets involved, liability protection, uh, very stable business. You don't see much fluctuation in. And 8.5 is right now, as of the time of me making this video, the prime rate. So 8.5 plus four to five points, more or less, 6.7 points, you start getting into that range. It's still not bad because you're getting favorable rates at the 8.5% than you would be if you were to convert 
the advanced funding of a total payback into an interest rate and then to an APR. You can say you're getting 25, 30%. And then overall APR, it could be a lot higher. But instead of just fixating yourself on what the interest rate is, look at what the term is. Look at what the amount of funding and how I'm applying that funding because you won't always get everything in a lump sum or in a line of credit at once. You got to work your way in and have that relationship. And I have what I believe to be the best lenders. And by your side, I will be here to help you. And again, it's people to me. Uh, I don't have the energy and time for those who don't value who I am as a person first and foremost, and then in business. I want to value you, obviously, and I care about that. And this is why I don't just take on anybody and everybody. I could be getting, quote unquote, the attention you might see, see you know, be seen in the market, but that doesn't equate to me taking on every person. I can be selective and I really do care about who's in my close circle and I have a Rolodex of people. And if you're lucky enough to get in it, I might be able to share with you other people. Maybe you get some mentorship here. Maybe you need to invest in real estate. So I have high net worth individuals, great connections. I also help people on the real estate side. So if you're looking to fix and flip rental properties, uh, looking at numbers adjustments, looking at how much property has been owned over the last 36 months. And uh, so there's a lot of stuff that I can help you with. So bankable financing, 8.5 to about 15.99%. So um, you'll see that a lot of the times fixed rates and if per quarter checks variable, but you got to plan for what your fixed and variable costs are at this moment and what they would look like. Have you had the funds? What are, in what categories would you increase and where would you increase your budget? So 8.5 to 15.9%. With this type of financing, just so you know, it takes more documentation to supply. So you're looking at two to three, usually three years of personal tax returns, two plus years time in business. You're looking at 250,000, excuse me, the sense I'm not putting the little dashes next to them, but you're looking at 250,000 in annual gross revenue over the last two years, verifiable. So a lot of this I'm looking at, not just the revenue that you are generating, that you say you're generating, but looking at assets, liabilities, looking at different columns on tax returns, tax reports, uh, just a whole bunch of things, P&Ls, um, cash flow statements, quite a bit, and seeing how when you take on this debt, where would you be at then? What would you be budgeting for? What would you be spending? What would you be getting back in return? Profits from those returns, et cetera. Uh, so that's part of it. And then what I also want to see is FICO, uh, business liquid credit. Usually you see a FICO business liquid credit score of 155. So how do you pay under your business? Are you making payments under your business? Some lenders kind of wave this off or they want a little less of a credit score. Uh, score requirement on the business side, but it's very important that you build your business credit because to get bank financing, to get SBA loans, they will consider that and how your business is making its payments and are they making their payments on time? That's the biggest indicator is not just the type of payments, but are you making your payments on time? Uh, how large are those payments? The larger and the more on time you are, the more consistent you are with larger term payments, the better. Obviously, you don't want to start there if you're going to over leverage yourself, but business credit is a huge desire uh, there are more details to this, but I just wanted to show you that if it's not over the last two years, I may have one over just one year with 660 credit. With this one, though, I'm looking at 680 plus FICO 2 on all three consumer credit bureaus, CCB, consumer credit bureaus. And if there's another one, we look at 660. If it's in the mix, if it's in the right industry, if I'm looking at the right cash flow, profitability, right net, net operating income, and a few more other metrics. So there's that. There's also a line of credit. We can couple in and say more or less it's the same over here, unless it's 660 credit. But when you're looking at the 660 credit level, a lot of the times the FICO SPSS score of 155 is usually a requirement. Having making sure your DMB, everything else is set up and getting ready. That's why there's options for business credit. And I recommend that you look outside if you don't have good credit, for example. But your strong point isn't even cash flow. It isn't even the collateral. It isn't even your friends and family. It's not even a HELOC or any other options available out in the market. You've exhausted things. I would start by building your business credit through vendor fleet retail store credit. And I'm going to leave a video series on that down below. You can also see the 0% interest side. Once you go through that part at the bottom, there'll be like a 0% interest link you can click on and view more information. And even using a credit partner who has better credit than you, than you that can assist you. So if you don't have the revenue for the business, you don't have the profitability, the cash flow, Overall, this can be quite difficult to do. So for startups and non-startups, outside of the SBA microloans, community advantage program, grants that you know far too well or don't, they can take some time to get. 
what I recommend for startups and non-startups is credit-backed funding. This is just a name that I use. There's many other ones. And this means we can look at 0% interest business credit cards. And I try to help people stack three to five at once, two to three if so, if one, and that's the only approval. But I've been doing this for many years and there's 0% interest credit cards. It just depends on how you use them. And you can be a complete startup with no time in business, minimal to no documents. I mean, a driver's license, a articles of incorporation, certification of formation within your state, making sure that you are a business and you have a business and it's in good standing, everything looks right. Uh, and then an EIN verification letter a lot of the times. And then for another form of financing, you have personal loans. So underneath credit back financing, you have the business credit cards at 0% and there are personal loans. Now, how you decide to use your funds, that's going to be very important. Yes, I can look at the two, try to combine the two for business combo, personal combo. If you qualify for one or the other, you decide on one or the other, there's that option. And like I tell people, it depends on your uses of funds. So once I understand that better, I'm going to be able to think, okay, well, this is why, this is how your operation is going day to day. This is what's coming in. This is already what's going out. This is what's projected to come in, go out. Uh, you're going to need an extra 1500 in the account at the end of the day, if that's even possible to do with this. But the personal loans have a lower repayability. With the 0% interest credit cards, that's great. We can look at different banks of financing, but you don't want to be over leveraged and saying, well, I didn't get enough ROI out of these six to 12 months that I had these three to four cards on or 15 months, whatever it is. And so it's about having more predictability ROI or a pattern that shows you that if I put into this marketing spend, I'm going to get a return on 15 to one, 25 to one. So I'm getting a two to three X multiplier off of what I'm currently making. So it's worth for me to invest into this project and get that rate of return that I'm getting and be able to use that revenue. you be able to use these profits to be able to pay off what you currently have. So just depends on what you're doing. Uh, if you wanna keep your repayability low with a term and a personal loan that's set as an installment, that's helpful and it keeps your repayability low enough and it's predictable. And as you go and you have to make those payments end of the month and all that, then a credit card that can roll over, even if it's 0%, now you have a balance. Can you make that payment on the balance? Full, half. I usually try to buffer between 25 to 30% of my remaining balance to pay off. So that way uh, I can have more room to spend on a card or two, depending on the limit and depending on the size of purchase or depending on what you're doing. Uh, obviously, you want to pay off more than you can. 50 to 75% puts you in a much more comfortable zone. And it's all about patterns, about how often do you pay down the balance? How much of the balance do you pay down? Is it 50 to 75% of the of the total balance, 25 to 30%? And are you paying as you go? Are you paying it in one lump sum? Once you generate revenue, you can't put enough to spend on this. Why can't you put enough to spend on that? There's different ways to look at this. So that's what I wanted to show you in this video. And when I mean new business loans, it could be a new bank loan. It could be a new SBA loan. SBA loans, they take 675 685 credit a lot of the time right now if case scenario in this case we can look at a 650 we could 660 but all other things need to align like the profitability you need to make a good case while your credit is a 650 level are there multiple business owners there's a lot to look for. but sba 7a loans are out there for 10 years amortized uh there's a lot of stuff real estate stuff io interest only five year then turn to 10 20 30 year repayment and if it isn't and you're doing some form of equity back financing, then if there is no amortization over 30 years and it's only a, a three year uh, interest only payment, what does that look like with the first year, the second, the third year? What would it look like for 12 months? How do I reverse engineer that number? And I look at, well, the first month I'm paying this and then this is how I'm paying every month. And the second year, I kind of went up a little bit, but the third year I stayed the same as the second year. There's a lot to look at and unpack, obviously, but the best way to get started again is to go through here in this questionnaire form. Here's my sites in case you wanted to know. This is it right here. And then just for some funding for like the personal loan stuff and what would it be asked for later on, if not in the beginning. Here I'm highlighting it in blue. I'm not going through each part, but that's what it would take for documentation for the most part that would be asked for. And again, here is my website. You'll see here. It might look different by the time you watch it. See right there. And then here is my questionnaire form again. And you can get started on the thank you page. So once you submit this on the thank you page, it'll bring you to a video of mine just to gain more recognition. I can go over a little bit more story-wise or anything else. So you know, there's a real person. And then you can click the button underneath it for 0% interest business credit cards and the personal funding if that would work. And you'll go through a quiz questionnaire that I put together. 
And based upon your answers, you'll either be eligible or ineligible and then continue from there and see what's more under it. So that's what happens. And again, I'll leave my information, my Facebook profile, likely an Instagram profile. Uh, if anything else, I'll leave there as well. Uh, and again, just so you know, there are a lot of different funding products, business credit cards, uh, like I went into earlier, you have the Chases of the World, the Amex, the U.S. Bank, uh, Travel Card. There's quite a bit. I'm not going to get into each one of them in this video. I created a separate one. I'll try to link you to business credit cards down below for startups and non-startups that I recommend in this year and also moving forward. Uh, but again, I hope you got a grasp of this subject with new business loans, business credit cards for business owners. But more importantly, that I don't put up with energy and time and efficiency. And that's not wrong. I don't, I don't like to bring this topic up. It's hard already. As an introvert, I, I don't talk much as it is. So I think you would value it even more that is coming from me because you don't hear it often. Go watch a video out there. You're not hearing people telling you that they value their character or they're out here saying that, hey, I'm not just taking on everybody and everybody. You would think they'd want to take everybody. No, uh, I have a standard and a reputation as well and if I find that much interest, not only in just the business, but in yourself, and I'm willing to help you because I go the extra mile. Once you're in, you're not just a friend. You're a family man. You're in my family group. And you're going to be treated like royalty. And honestly, you're not going to be having to get checked up on and be questioned and all this. And I'm more of a listener. I ask the right questions. I'll go deep into things. And the questionnaire form is the best place to begin. And we can go from right there on out the email that I'll send back and all of the details included. So that's all I want to get into in this video. Hopefully you got value from it. If you did, I greatly appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. Please feel free to share it with others who you feel will find value from it. If you would like to, not that you have to. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon so you do not miss any future content I'll be coming out with. That is all for now. Take care.